a second centre of trade upgrade in the New World. This time in Bahia, which again is already a centre of trade. This must be a result of our wise policies. <laughs> sure. We'll call them wise policies as opposed to sheer freaking luck right now. Well, to be fair, the colonies have received full investment throughout. It's the military that's suffering. What's the difference between level 1 and level 2 central trade? That is an excellent question. So, if we go to... Uh, Santiago. We can see that a level 1 center of trade provides just plus 5 local trade power, which is nice. It's still definitely better than not having a center of trade at all, especially when you start building marketplaces. And then when that upgrades to a level 2, you get 5% cheaper development cost, the trade power doubles to plus 10, and you also gain 10% institution spread. Then if you somehow manage to get that upgraded to a level 3, which is the tip-top tier, as we can see in Venice, which is a world port, then you get a 25 bonus uh, local trade production and institution spread 30% faster. Furthermore, all provinces in that area gain a 10% cheaper local dev cost. You gain plus 100% sailors and then also an extra building slot. Plus, your faction gains yearly navy tradition decay of minus 0.2%. So having those tier 3 centers of trade is amazing. But going just from 1 to 2 is a really big upgrade. Why do I have no sailors? Because I have a big fleet just sitting out here taking attrition right now. They're not actually taking attrition. This counts as operational because they're at sea. And that means that they're effectively on a mission. So our usage per month exceeds the, um, the gain. Plus, this has actually been a relatively intensive naval conflict. Most of the battles that we've actually fought against the Mamluks are at sea. Getting to level 2 quickly is a good strategy when relying on trade heavily. Absolutely. There is very little reason not to get to level 2. As you'll see here in uh, my home area, every single centre of trade I own is level 2. I've invested. they are 200 ducats. I think that's completely worth the price, especially in your home node. Getting to level 3 is more difficult. You can only have as many uh, level 3 centres of trade as you have merchants. So our maximum limit for level 3 centers of trade is 3. So you do need to be a little bit more strategic in where you put those. Uh, so Sevilla, for example, would be an excellent candidate for a level 3. Um, potentially uh, Cantabria as well. Because Burgos is actually in the same area as Cantabria, so will benefit from the development cost reduction. And Toledo is in the same area as La Mancha, which is the gold mine. So it could also um, benefit from a cheaper dev cost. So possibly Cantabria, Toledo, Sevilla would be our level 3 candidates. Faster, slow pokes! The natives of Zakatas have not exactly been friendly to our expedition. The ones we tried... The ones we met tried to steal our weapons during the night and during the struggle, two natives were killed. Our crew managed to flee 100 miles in a day before they dared camp again. Wow, that's a long way. 100 miles in a day? On foot? Through jungle? That's crazy. That's not even possible. Because let's say you're marching 10 hours... You're moving at an average speed of, at an absolute maximum, three, four miles a day. That's like 30 miles. Flee, you fools. Because, yeah, walking for 10 hours a day, you'd have to be doing 10 miles an hour. Sorry, 10 hours a day, you'd be moving at uh, 10 miles an hour. If you did 20 hours in the day... You could do it at 5 miles per hour. But imagine going 5 miles per hour for 20 hours. 100 miles is nearly 4 marathons. Yeah, exactly. That's a crazy distance. 100 kilometers, maybe, but 100 miles? Madness. A dog's life. 
A big black dog by the name of Seaman has accompanied the expedition from the start and had experienced many adventures. A beaver had bit him so badly the expedition's doctor had to perform surgery on its hind leg. Mosquitoes plagued the expedition and the dog howled with the torture experienced by them. Natives in Zokpilan had stolen Seaman, but he was retrieved shortly. Our conquistador has grown fond of the dog and would be devastated if anything happened to him. The tribe in Jokpilian will know our wrath if anything happens to that dog. We gain prestige. However, they dislike us or it's just a dog. They will know our wrath, for it is a Castellan dog. It's not just any dog, it's our dog. And Sarah is producing cocoa. Okay. I really hope that Rio Grande doesn't just produce grain or something. I'll be really, really annoyed. What are the chances... 20% tropical wood, 17% of tea. Now that would make me very happy. If Rio Grande started producing tea in El Dorado, that would just be perfection. It's not gold we found there, it's tea! Or fish, or coffee, or sugar, tobacco, salt. Grain's actually only a 1% chance. There is a 16% chance of fish, but basically any other result should be okay. Does Brazil do tea? The miracle of life. Lose two war exhaustion. Okay, that's really good for us. I was getting a little bit concerned that we're just sitting here on the 2.9. But now we're going to go down to 0.9. In these dark days of war and death, a reminder of new beginnings can ease the pains of our people. Our great king, Muljin I, and his noble queen consort, Julia, have been blessed with another child. The birth of the new... Manrique de Lara, babe revitalizes the people of Castile, lose to war exhaustion. Excellent. How is this man still alive? In a hundred population, Sarah. Don't mind if I do. Okay, we've now got garrisons and all of our cities which is good and you're continuing to explore and discover me more of mexico but you're not british why would a spaniard care about tea and this timeline they do care about tea they care deeply about tea dolkadir is gaining war um exhaustion They still are just adamantly refusing. If they didn't have fear, Fierce Negotiator, they'd be gone. Oh yeah, so we do. Uh, did I miss a Sindrin message? I don't think I did. Oh, I did! Have I heard about the new board game that's sweeping Spain? It's called The Settlers of Catalan. Nice. How can they be... How can the Mamluks be at war for so long and not be... And still be uh, making profit? Because I'm not really doing any damage to them. Like, I'm not blockading them. I don't have any provinces being occupied. Yes, they're having to repay... Or pay for armies being replenished, but that's about it. And we can actually just double check to see if they are, in fact, still... Yeah, they're still healthy. And we're at 16 loans now. Is this still the war from the last dream? Oh, yes. Just looked it up. The US Army does marches of 12 miles in 3 hours with full gear as part of training. Yeah, which is four miles an hour, which is still less than the five that they would be doing for six uh, for 20 hours a day. Modern athletes can manage 100 miles in about 12 hours on a road in ideal weather and running shoes with people supplying food and water stations along the way. Yeah, not in full combat gear, in the middle of a jungle in unknown terrain with no roads. <laughs> Beginning of 1519, Karakanulu faced almost a decade of utter chaos, surely consuming the country from within and bringing it to the verge of collapse. GG, QQ. I need this war to end. Hmm. 
This has been just such a disaster of a conflict. Come on, someone, just declare war on the Mamelukes. They are so distracted. Well, actually, they're not that distracted right now. Uh, the Tupi are converting again. Sierra's gaining a loads of just free development, which is quite nice. Did the Iberian wedding happen? Mm, kind of. I got PU'd. A new cardinal. La Mancha has a new cardinal. That's good. How's the papacy liking us? The papacy likes us. Oh, that's a point. Do we still have the usury? No, we currently have it active. Hey, Shenrir. Thank you very much. That's an early raid from Shen. How are you guys doing? Thanks very much for the raid. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, very early today. Renewing loans. Anyway, yes, my name is Mordred Viking. I'd like to welcome you to this stream, those of you who are raiding us just now. Uh, this is the beginner friendly series, whereby basically we are introducing newer players or those with a thousand hours of experience and are just completing the tutorial to some of the mechanics of European Universalis. So if you have any questions, then please do let me know. Uh, this is definitely the platform to ask them. Uh, we're running through Castile, which is the nation that I would currently recommend as the beginner nation if you are interested in starting a run of European Universalis for yourself. And is this game is in a really good place at the moment, so this is definitely the time to do it. Shen has teeth drilling to get done. Ah, I see. So we are currently in the Endless War. This is a fight that's been going since 1488. It is now 1520. Um, it's a war against the Mamluks, which I started, expecting this to be a quick smash and grab uh, to basically get some money. Instead, we are now 16 loans in the... 17 loans in the tank, 3,600 ducats. Uh, we've lost basically every single military contact we've had with the Mamluks. They have two tier three generals just running around at the moment, two three stars. Uh, their army is better than mine, their navy is roughly equal, and it's not been going too hot. We're currently waiting for Dulkadir to peace out. Unfortunately, Dulkadir has a slight issue. No, he's gone! He died! Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Freaking finally! So Dulkadir had a 72-year-old uh, sultan with fierce negotiator, and because of that trait, they were refusing to peace out of this war despite everyone being on low. So now I can get Dulkadir out of this frickin' conflict by one point. Yep, do it. Send that demand. Okay, so Dulkadir is now out of this war. Uh, which should, once my diplomat comes back again, give me an opportunity to piece out the Mamelukes for less. The Mamelukes were demanding quite a lot. They want me to break my alliance with France, which would basically uh, get Aragon to declare war on me. It would be a bad time for everyone. Um, they want me to give up Navarra, and they want to give Alicante back to Aragon, plus money uh, and war reparations, and I just can't afford this. What I'm really kind of holding out for is somebody else to declare war on the Mamluks and kind of take some of the pressure off. But they just don't seem interested. Uh, meanwhile, we are colonizing really quite heavily at the moment. We have gotten uh, superiority over the Caribbean, so despite the fact that the Portuguese look like they're the most numerous out here at the moment, we actually have the Treaty of Tortillas on our side, and we are currently trying to develop a treaty in Brazil because Rio Grande is crazy because it has El Dorado. So once we have developed all five of these provinces, which is basically all of the centers of trade, Brazil is also going to be protected under the Treaty of Tortillas, and then we can start moving probably towards Mexico and see if we can grab that. And yeah, the other thing about that crazy Dulcadir ruler was he was called Aladdin, so clearly they have the genie on their side, and it's not fair. I played Castile, but I had problems when I took too much territory. What's the advice to do instead of taking territory? Well, it's not so much instead of taking territory. You just need to take less. So if you're playing an expansionist game, which is fine, it's a totally legitimate way of playing, you need to keep an eye on this coalition map mode. As long as what's called the aggressive expansion is below 50, then you're fine. 
if more than four countries get more than 50 aggressive expansion with you, you're going to have problems because they'll start forming what's called a coalition. And those coalitions are big bands of countries that will go and punch your face in. And they are very difficult to uh, piece out. So the golden rule of this game is stay below 50 aggressive expansion. It's a long game. There's like six, 500 and something years of gameplay. You're going to have time for another war. You fight the war, you wait 10, 15 years for the truce, you go and fight again. It, it, the big thing here is expansion is slow. Don't just try and grab everything at once. Grab little pieces here and there and everywhere. And especially as Castile, you have opportunities abroad, particularly in the New World. Like all of these grey territories, that's completely open and free for you to take. Sure, there's going to be a bit of scramble for territory later on as England, France, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, possibly the Mamelukes, Morocco, um, Brittany get involved. But until that point, you're basically alone here with Portugal and you have time to take the really choice bits. Will this be coming out on YouTube? Yes, once I've sat down and edited it. Because I really need to do a lot of work on that first episode because I know that it was a bit rambly. Um, so once I've cut down that first episode and made it more approachable for true new beginners, uh, which is the audience for like the beginning of this series, then I'll be posting it up. But that's just going to take a lot of work and I just haven't had time. It's either going to require a full re-record or a re-edit. I kind of need to sit down and work out what the best option will be. Is there nothing like the auto-end wars in E4 where conflicts are active, no battles, and naval stuff? I thought there was, and I was kind of expecting that to have happened, but I suspect our war score is too high. Because of all the battles we lost earlier on. Like, we've got a minus 19 from battles, then minus 25 for the fact we haven't occupied Cairo. We are still losing money. But at least Dolkadir is out. So now if we try to piece you out. What would you demand? Still a 44 war score. It hasn't actually changed at all. And there's only a plus 7 from length of war. They have massively nerfed that. Length of war you used to get lots, lots, lots more than just 7. In fact, I wonder if that's bugged. So this is a war that's been going on for about 40 years now. And there's only a 7 modifier? Call for peace happens if a war goes on too long. If you're winning the war. If you're losing the war, it doesn't. Yeah, the ducats per month I don't mind so much. Annulling the treaty with France, ending the overlordship over Navarra, that's a big one. Like, giving up Alicante? Yeah, I can do that. Reparations? Sure, it's, it's limited. Even the treaty with France I'll give up, but I really don't want to give up Navarra. Because somebody else will jump in and grab it, and that will make it more difficult to take. Alicante I can take just because I have a rivalry with Aragon, so once I've recovered in 15 years' time, we'll be able to slap them around again. In fact, this war was intended to basically raise the financing for another war against Aragon. Uh, that's clearly gone well. But I really don't want to stay in this conflict. I cannot afford to. But have they changed the rules about the length of war? Only took you three hours to unpause. Yeah, therein lies the problem <laughs> with that first episode. I just don't see any other ways out. Because obviously land attacks haven't worked. We've tried three times now and been stack wiped every single time. So landing troops, not possible. Blockades, possible. But we would need a bigger fleet. How big is their fleet? Uh, we have a significantly larger navy than they do. So we could try and blockade them and force the uh, war score down from that. That's not actually a terrible idea. Okay, let's go and blockade them, see what damage we can do with that. We're also going to need to unmothball 
you. And you're just going to need to join the fun. We still have our port in Crete. Because we've been paying Venice all along for port access. So we can get out here without any attrition. Oh, but if we pull the... Hang on. No, this doesn't work. The cogs are going to have to stay here. Because if we pull the ships away from Gibraltar, they cross troops. And that's far, far worse for us. Mutiny in Zillotep. Zillo Tepec. Several crew members of the Conquistador's expedition were captivated by the idyllic life in Zillo Tepec and decided to abandon the expedition. This was declared an act of mutiny by the Conquistador and after a long hunt, the mutineers were captured. So we can lose some admins and then back we can flog them for military. We're ahead of time in military, so we'll flog them. Um, I'm also just going to double check the wiki to see if they have changed uh, length of war. Starts at plus 45 at the start of the war and decays by 0 0.75. So after five years, it becomes negative. It's got another 35 years. It should be incredibly negative. So why is it only minus uh, seven? And it's not changed at all. Yeah, we have a crusade. Although I'm not paying my armies at the moment, so that crusade modifier isn't affecting us. There goes Dolkadir's forces. If it wasn't Dolkadir in that first attack, we would have managed to take territory and probably ended this. Dolkadir, the bane of my existence. Hello, Mr. Mole. Oh, speaking of that, we did indeed have various people joining us. I am sorry that I did not acknowledge you at that time. Wallalo, Matty Tips, Actim Lion, Hexplosions, Cowbot, Sarsalum, Sizox, uh, uh, Taito Zik. Thank you very much for the follows. Welcome to the channel. Good to see you joining us. Could have been worse. Could have been Akinulu with their monster starting king. Well, the Dulkadir 71-year-old was a 551. He wasn't exactly bad. Only need one ship to block, block straights. Yeah, I know, but they might come and try and knock us out. Depending on where their navy is. Because losing the transports wouldn't be a huge deal, but losing the crossing would. Dog's life again. Native uprising. Uh, we're going to piss off the Otomi for the extra prestige. I mean, we're at 100 prestige throughout this whole thing, so we have all the bonuses to morale that that gives. We're blockading, but it's barely affecting their war score. So this bit should hurt them a bit more. All right, we're down to 41. It hasn't accounted for these yet. Yes, it has. Alexandria's. I don't really want to spread out more than this. We'll wait until June. 41. I don't think we're going to get any better than this. Not without somebody else declaring war on them. I really don't want to take another loan. And yeah, they have a lot of ports down here, so really blockading the Mamluks is basically impossible at this stage of the game. That's one of their strengths. I think I've just got to swallow my pride and take this. But man, it hurts.
Really? They don't want me to release Granada? That's interesting. Oh, whoops, I had military access through the Ottomans this whole time, which has been losing me Diplo. Yeah, they don't want any of this other stuff. You can tell by the thumbs ups. So they would accept a uh, concede defeat if I got them low enough. But we're on the verge of taking another... Well, we can't just attack Navarro afterwards because we'll have a truce with them. And in that time, France or Aragon will definitely snap them up. Positive war score and strength. Relative strength of alliance can do a lot to counter the strength and length of war. Yeah, countering it. This isn't countering it. This is just a 7%. This is what I was meant to be looking at. It, the length of war is only plus 7. It should be way higher than that. It should be about 30 by now. Because this fight's been going on for 40 years, near enough. Well, 32 years. Can I offer to be humiliated? I don't know that they'd want that. Uh, actually, I don't think we're rivals. No, we must be, because that's how I declared the war. This was a humiliation. They don't want it. They're not interested. Nope, they want that peace deal and only that peace deal. It's ridiculous the AI don't get war exhaustion. They definitely do. I've done so little damage to them though. And war exhaustion's right there. Must admit, I kind of like the Mamluks being strong rather than just the Ottoman punching back. Oh, 100%. Like, I think the Mamluks are a very strong nation. I was just kind of expecting this to be a quick war, because I wasn't going to take much from them. I was just going to do this for money. I only needed maybe 20 war score, and it would be out. Yeah, they don't get called for peace. That's true. But what's up with the length of the war? That's the thing I'm most concerned about, because if that's not just going to be this war, then that's going to be a problem. I mean, I wouldn't mind if they capped length of war. I kind of think that they probably should. But, plus seven for 32 years of warfare? That definitely something feels off there. 